When scientists began studying the way that bacterial cells protect themselves from different types of viral agents from bacteriophages, they realized that inside bacterial cells are these special digestive proteins, these special digestive enzymes known as restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases. And what these restriction enzymes do is they are able to actually cut or cleave the viral DNA molecule into many different pieces, thereby destroying that viral DNA and deactivating that viral DNA. So one way that bacterial cells protect themselves from bacteriophages is by using these special enzymes we call restriction enzymes. Now, because there are many different possibilities that a DNA sequence can consist of, we have many, many different types of restriction enzymes that exist in nature. And each and every one of these restriction enzymes basically cleaves along a DNA molecule at a specific location on that double-stranded DNA molecule. Now, Many of these enzymes in our study of these restriction enzymes, we realized that many of these restriction enzymes actually cut at palindromic sequences along that double-stranded DNA molecule. And to see what we mean by a palindromic sequence of DNA, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose we have a, uh, we have a section, a palindromic section of our double-stranded DNA. So remember, in any double-stranded DNA molecule, we have two single strands that run anti-parallel with respect to one another. So this blue strand begins at the 5N and ends at the 3N, and this green strand begins at the 3N and ends at the 5N. That's what we mean by anti-parallel. Now, we also have the base pairing between the two single strands, and that's what holds the two strands together. So we have the adenine shown in red, we have the thymine shown in dark purple, we have the orange, that's the guanine, we have the cytosine, that's the light purple. And so what we mean by palindromic sequences of DNA, if we read these bases going this way, we get the same exact reading if we go backwards. So going this way, along the blue single strand, we have A, A, G, C, T, T, and going this way in the opposite direction along the green strand, the other single strand, we also get A, A, G, C, T, T. So that's exactly what we mean by a palindromic sequence. And most of these restriction uh, enzymes, restriction enzymes basically look for these types of palindromic sequences on the DNA, and that's where they cleave those DNA molecules. So for this particular example, let's suppose we add some sort of restriction enzymes that looks for this specific palindromic sequence. What the enzyme does is it finds that palindromic sequence and it cuts at a specific location along that DNA molecule. So for example, let's say this restriction enzyme that we add cuts between the A uh, bases, between the adenine bases along this specific palindromic sequence. So that means because we have two A's here and two a, uh, A's here, we have the restriction enzyme cuts not only here, but it also cuts here. And once we cut those single-strand molecules, these hydrogen bonds basically dissociate and we form the following molecule. So now we basically have this asymmetric uneven cut and the reason we have an asymmetric cut is now we have these uh, single strands of DNA molecule are exposed. So they're no longer connected, but they are exposed. So here we still have a double helix and here we still have a double helix, but within this section and within this section, we have single strands that are exposed. And these single strands are commonly known as sticky ends. Why do we call them sticky ends? Well, because they're complementary with respect to one another. And if we somehow allow them to reconnect and then we use a special type of enzyme, to reform these bonds right over here, these sticky ends, because they're complementary, they're going to stick right back together. 
Now, when scientists discovered this, they realized that one important application of restriction enzymes will be to form recombinant DNA molecules. So remember, a recombinant DNA molecule is a DNA molecule that consists of two or more different DNA sequences, DNA molecules. So to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose we have two different DNA molecules. So DNA molecule number one and DNA molecule number two, that basically came from two different sources. And what we want to do is we want to somehow combine these two DNA molecules and to form a single recombinant DNA molecule that consists of these two different DNA molecules. So the way that we do it is we basically realize that let's say these two different DNA molecules both contain these palindromic sequences that we discussed earlier. So let's say this is the palindromic sequence on this molecule that reflects this and this is the palindromic sequence on the second DNA molecule that also reflects this sequence here. So we have the red, the red, the orange, the light purple, dark purple, dark purple, that reflects this. And then along the green section, we have the purple, the purple, the light purple, that orange, red, and red. And the same type of palindromic sequence is found on this second DNA molecule as well. So we have red, red, orange, light purple, dark purple, dark purple on one strand, and the lower strand has the dark purple, dark purple, light purple, orange, red, and red. So let's suppose we take these two DNA molecules and now we add the same restriction enzyme that we basically used in this particular case. And what that means is this restriction enzyme will move along the DNA molecule until it locates this specific palindromic sequence. And once it locates that palindromic sequence, it will cleave between the A um, bases between those red bases. So we have two red bases here, so that means it will cut here, and two red bases on the other one, it cuts here. And so we form the following two uneven sticky ends. So this is how the cut basically takes place. And now on the other one, the restriction enzyme also finds this palindromic sequence and cuts right over here and right over here as shown by these two arrows. And so we form the following two sticky ends. Now, notice because we use the same restriction enzyme to cut these two DNA molecules, these sticky ends will be complementary with respect to one another. So what that means is this sticky end right over here will be complementary to this sticky end right over here. And likewise, this sticky end right over here will be complementary to this sticky end right over there. And so what, what, uh, what happens is if we take a special enzyme known as DNA ligase that is able to reform these bonds between this section and this section and between this section and this section, then if we add the, digest this uh, DNA ligase into the mixture, what happens is this entire section will be placed onto this complementary section and this entire section will be placed onto this complementary section. And so at the end, we're going to form this single molecule, single DNA molecule, that is a recombinant DNA molecule. It will consist of these individual DNA molecules that ultimately came from two different sources. So what scientists realized is once they actually discovered restriction enzymes, they then realized that they can use these restriction enzymes to basically form any recombinant DNA molecule that they actually want. Now, the next question is, once they actually form that recombinant DNA molecule, how do you amplify your results? How do you produce many copies of that same recombinant DNA molecule? Because if you want to conduct many different types of experiments, you need many different copies of that same recombinant DNA molecule. Well, one way to do it is by using plasmids. 
So remember, in any DNA molecule or in, uh, in, any, um, in any bacterial cell, on top of having that DNA of that bacterial cell, the bacterial cell also has the smaller DNA, smaller circular DNA, known as plasmids. So let's suppose we take a bacterial cell and we isolate, we take out that plasmid. So this is our plasmid of some particular DNA molecule. So this is one DNA molecule. And suppose that this is our target DNA, the recombinant DNA that we form, that we basically want to amplify. So what we do now is we take these two different sources of DNA, we add a restriction enzyme, so we cut them at specific locations, and then we add DNA ligase to basically produce this recombinant plasmid that contains this blue section that we basically want to amplify. So this is the same exact process that we followed right over here. And now we take this recombinant plasmid and we insert it into bacterial cell and that, that bacterial cell will basically divide many, many times via binary fission and produce many identical copies of these recombinant plasmids. And ultimately, we can take these bacterial cells and we can once again isolate these recombinant DNA uh, plasmids and now we can use the same restriction enzymes to basically cut at the same exact locations and we can isolate these blue sections, these recombinant DNA molecules, and now we have many, many, many copies of these DNA molecules, recombinant DNA molecules that we can actually work with. So we see that to form recombinant DNA molecules, we actually need restriction enzymes. And one way to amplify the recombinant DNA that we form is by using these plasmids. Now, another way will be focused in a different lecture. So this is actually, uh, this method actually has one important limitation, and that's the size of that recombinant DNA. So we can't use recombinant DNA molecules that are too large because these plasmids have a limit to how large they can actually get. So the problem with this method of amplifying the recombinant DNA is there is a limit to the size of that recombinant DNA that we can actually use to amplify via this particular method.